Hello everybody, Cody here from Boss Poses 3D and today what we're going to be doing is going over another tutorial that I promised I would teach you guys a long time ago and that's how to track phone footage inside of After Effects. I know a lot of people have been having uh, problems, I know they can get it correctly if it's in landscape mode but if it's in portrait mode people are having a lot of problems with doing this so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you very easily how to correct that all you have to do is do a slash command inside your focal length and you're ready to go honestly it's that simple and i'm going to be doing a little gundam animation as you see i got my gundam collection here i love these things so much so to do like a real world battle would be pretty cool right so that's kind of something i'm working on now and this actually brought that to my attention that you guys are looking for this tutorial because i remember a long time ago somebody asked me about foam footage so what we're going to do is boot up after effects just make sure you go get some footage in uh, portrait mode, make sure you do that because that's how we're going to be tracking it today. Landscape mode just tracks normal. There's usually never a problem with that, but it, there's always a problem with portrait mode. And I'm going to show you how to fix this today. So keep tuned and let us get started. All right, now that we're inside of After Effects, what I want you guys to do now is import your footage. You have two options here new composition, new composition from footage. Click the new composition from footage so it takes over its resolution, and I'm going to open this up just like that, okay? So, you're not going to need to do any stabilization or anything like that. All I want you to do is go into the effects tab that's down here at the bottom. I want you to type track, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you're going to see this thing called 3D Camera Tracker. All we're going to do is click and drag that just like our 2D VFX video. We're going to let that run and when it's done solving you're going to see a point cloud of colors and that's going to give us a bunch of targets to add our uh, origin to. So I'm just going to pause the video until this is done tracking and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. All right, now that our camera tracker has finished, you're going to notice these colors all over the ground. And when I move my mouse over any of them, you're going to see this target show up. That target is going to allow us to create a camera origin or a target where we can add things to if you're doing that in After Effects. But if, since we're bringing this into Blender, you can pretty much go crazy once we have one of these. So what we're going to do is just find a really neat spot for this. So I'm going to say right there will be perfect you want to left click and then you want to right click and then you want to click this option that says create solid and camera and after you do that you're going to notice this colored plane that's on the ground now that colored plane is fully tracked already and as you see when we get closer to it it gets bigger back and when we are further away it gets you know further away okay so that's all we have to do for being inside of after effects right now so i want to want you to open up blender right now because what we have to do is actually start importing this so make sure you install the add-on through prefences add-ons hit the install and then i'll show you once we're inside of blender where you can find that add-on but i want you to copy something first before we jump over there I want you to open this camera tracker right here. I want you to open transform and I want you to copy anything that's blue. So in this case, position and orientation, we're going to hit control copy. And then what we're going to do is jump on over into Blender. All right, now that we're inside of Blender, there's one very important step you guys have to pay attention to because even I make this mistake all the time is delete the original camera that's in there. So just delete that one. And then once you install your add-on, it's not going to be on the right side over here. It'll be on the left side over here, which is awesome. I love having it over here. So once we had all that copied from After Effects, we're going to hit Create Camera. And you're going to notice just like our 2D video that we had all of our keyframes in there. Everything should be good. And up here in the hierarchy, we have our camera transform. I want you to open that and I want you to click the camera that's inside of that. So that way you can access these camera options that are down here under your properties. So we're going to click that. The first thing we're going to worry about right now is this focal length. So what we're going to do is jump back over into After Effects really quickly and I'm going to show you how to get that. All right, now that we're inside of After Effects and we want to get our focal length, all we're going to do is double click the camera tracker down here and you're going to get this window that pops up and I'll bring that up for you. It looks like that and what we're going to be doing is we're not going to be focusing on this number where it says film size. Look below that for this digit right here, focal length. We're going to click it once and you're going to notice that it's going to expand that number. Hit control copy and just hit OK on that. And then what we're going to do is jump back over into Blender and paste that where it says focal length. So let's go do that. All right, now that we're back inside Blender over here where it says focal length, we're just going to hit control V 
paste all those numbers in there. We're going to come back to that uh, one for one last step later. But for now, that's all we need to do. And, and then if you hit insert on your keyboard, you'll notice that we're inside of our camera. So what I want you to do as well is go down in the properties, same options that we're in right now. We're going to hit background images, add image, movie, and then we're going to hit open. And then I'm going to find the movie clip that we want to work with that we tracked inside of After Effects. And you're going to notice right away that this video footage is the correct orientation, but it's smushed and rotated. So it's not true that you have to re-export this from After Effects. That's just an overly complex you know, try hard way to do it. So all I want you to do is this, click fit, hit rotation, hit 90, and you're going to notice that now it's properly orientated, but it's off scale. For the scale, I want you to press 1.77778. So four sevens and an eight, okay? And then you're going to hit enter, and now you notice that our footage is perfectly fit to uh, back to our scene just like it is in After Effects, okay? So the next thing we have to do is bring in that tracking plane. So we're going to go back into After Effects. Once you do this a couple of times, it's like water. It's so easy to do. So let's jump back over into After Effects. All right, now that we're inside of here, we can close off this camera arrow right here and click the arrow next to that square that you just created. It'll be a, not a random color. It's usually purple. Again, click Transform. In this one, we're going to click Anchor Point, hold Shift, and then click Orientation. That way it highlights everything between that. So you should have four things highlighted. Hit Control Copy. And again, we're going to go back on over into Blender. Okay, now that we're back inside of Blender, down here where we created our camera, we're going to click, click the Create Plane button. And you're going to notice that this is off-center. Don't move anything, because once I start uh, moving my camera, you're going to notice that it's in somewhat of the same position. It's pretty close to being accurate now, but you're going to notice that it is floating all over the place. And this is the part where everybody gets confused on what to do now. So if this was the 2D scene in landscape mode, this would work already. But uh, for some reason, it just it just does not take this footage very well. So I'm going to show you a very easy trick to fix this. So up in the hierarchy up here, again, just click your camera. We should still be in our camera options right here. This is where we're going to go back to focal length. We're going to click it next to where it says millimeters. So right beside it, I want you to press slash. So forward slash. And then that same 1.77778. So four sevens in an eight. 1.1234 1 and 8 and hit enter. And you're going to notice that this changed its orientation right here in our scene. And now when we play it back, our plane is perfectly tracked to our scene. They absolutely perfect. Look at that. It's it's flawless, right? So now you're pretty much ready to get carried away. So what I always do is I just exit this view right here. So I have that bound to my mouse. And then what I want you to do is click the plane. I always press just shift right click. That way you have this world orientation right there. And then you can hit back. You can add a cube or whatever. But for in this case, like I said, I wanted to do like a Gundam or something like that. So I'm just going to bring in, I don't know, say like a source film model of some kind. So just give me a second to find something. I am uh, browsing. We'll do a Gundam aerial. This will take a minute just to import. And you'll see my Gundam aerial is floating up there. So I just want to make sure now you'll notice that your camera is still highlighted over here. So just click anywhere before you import something. That way you don't just accidentally move it. So I'm just going to highlight the armature of that. I'm going to hit object, snap, and then I'm going to go to selection to cursor. So now my Gundam aerial should be on the selection. So now I can scale him up. And you're going to notice I have a big ass robot in my scene. I'm going to rotate him. You can even do your animation now, right? So this is where all the fun starts. And like I said in the next tutorial that I'm going to show you how to uh, change the orientation. But as you see, our orientation is actually really good right now. And that's just because our model is in the orientation. But if you look at our plane, it's a little bit off, which is still pretty close to being accurate. So even this is animatable right now. So what I'm actually going to do is just go into pose mode. I'm just going to give him a better, uh, just a better pose. I could even keyframe it if I really wanted to. And yeah, you can, I'm using a source film uh, model right now. You can use uh, whatever you want, really. XPS, doesn't matter. 
We'll do that. We'll just bring his arms up. Oop. Put his arm down. Make him looking down at us. And then we'll get his leg out. Other leg out and then we'll position his feet okay so now that we have a position for our gundam arrow you'll notice that that looks pretty good already right and i'm going to show you how to add a shadow catcher so you can add shadows from your model that's a very important step as well but from now the tutorial is pretty much over for tracking uh in uh portrait mode for you can pretty much leave and go do whatever you want because as you see we are, are perfectly tracked with our gundam inside of uh the footage right so that's amazing so the next thing we can actually do is uh, create the shadow catcher. So we're going to use the same plane that imported with it. So if I go over into cycles, actually, you're going to notice that the lighting is completely off from this. And that's because we don't have an HDRI in it. So I just use Blender Kit. We can just find like an outdoor one. Just import that and you'll notice we have this. I'm just going to change a few settings up at the top so I want you to come down into where uh, your resolution settings are and all of that jazz and I want you to come up I'm just gonna close up all of these things uh, render options we want to go into cycles mode okay and then we're gonna come down into film transparent and now that you see, we have our HDRI and our film in the seat, and that actually looks really goddamn good right now. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, change this. If you get this blurring issue, it's because you don't have enough samples in your viewport. So even if I did that and then turned off that, you'll notice that we have way better uh, lighting on our figure now. So now what we can do is actually do the shadow catcher. So now that we have actually a light source in our scene, so I'm going to get out of pose mode here. I'm going to take this plane, and I'm just going to scale this as big as I can get it. And see that shadow that's running off of our character right now? We're going to utilize that. So what we're going to do is stay in our rendered options here. I'm just trying to remember exactly where that option is. Maybe it's in... Let me see. Let me see. It should be right up in... I'm pretty sure it's in there. Uh, let me dig around for it. It's got to be here. I'm trying to find the shadow. I can never remember exactly. So we have the uh, transparent on. I'm going to come down into here. I'm just going to flick through them really quickly and figure out where I am. Pretty sure it was here. Ah, visibility. And then we're going to click this right here, shadow catcher. And you're going to notice that that goes invisible. But now we have a shadow on our ground, right? And we can make that as big as we want. So now when I go out of it, you're going to notice that our character has a shadow on the ground. You can change the opacity of this if you want. So we're just going to lower the Gundam a little bit. Kind of like that. Actually, you know what we can actually do to make this even cooler? We'll make him like kneeling down because I didn't account for him uh, standing. right? So we can just pose him up like this. There we go. Okay, put him on the ground. Maybe bring his other leg forward a bit so it's like actually touching. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, man. <laughs> I, I love doing this stuff, right? So that that's fun to me. Okay, so now we're done, right? So that's all you have to do. Now I'm going to show you how to render it out. So this is very simple as well. So click on compositing at the top. Click on use nodes. You're going to have this. Just click this once and push it over. Click this and push that over here. You're going to add two things, okay? Click shift A. Hit search type uh, movie. So now we're going to have a movie clip. Put that right under there. Hit uh, Shift A again. And then do Alpha Over. Whoop. Not Alpha Convert. Sorry. Alpha Over. This one right here. And this is very simple for you to do if, you're, if it's not rendering properly. All you're going to do is take this uh, image from the top. Put it in the bottom slot. Take this one. 
put it in the top slot, and then take that output and then put it into the composite so it looks like this. Make sure you select your video right here. Okay. So now that you have your video selected just like that, you can change the orientation and the scale, which might be a proper way to do it, but this should just work fine anyway. So what we're going to do is go back over into Layout. You're going to notice that we have our Gundam, which is actually really damn cool. So I'm just going to hit Render Image really quickly to show you that this works flawless. So I'm just going to wait for that to pop up and do its thing. It should only have to render about 26 samples or something like that. Back in the pausing, got that, got that, got that. Render that out. Okay. I just want to make sure my render properties are in the correct orientation. There is an alpha you usually have to use. I'm just trying to get the image to render out the way I want it to. So let's find output. So I could go QRTL animation, hit RGBA, render, render image. And then once it gets to the 26 sample, it should pop that in for us. Yep, and just switch that back to 264. Go up, just make sure everything's good. Transparent, video on. And then all you pretty much have to do from here is hit render. So if I go, so another thing you can do if this transparency in your video isn't perfect, you can go back into your camera options here. So let me just select the camera and get out of pose mode first. So camera. And then you should be able to change your opacity down here if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yeah, right here. So you can uh, enable it full. So that's what the video is pretty much going to look like when it's all good. And you're going to see once we get closer that our Gundam Ariel actually gets bigger, which is actually really nice. And then you can just render that out. So just remember that you copy this exactly as it is. This is very important. So it's always going to look like that. You got your render layer, your movie clip alpha over, and that's going to go on over into that. Now all you have to do is pretty much just render out your video and you're done. So if you guys like today's video, please do like and subscribe. It didn't take me too long to do this. didn't take me too long to figure this out. Love helping you guys, but uh, thank you all for tuning in. Please do check out the rest of the videos. Tons for you to learn, and have yourselves a great day. Take care.